Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, back in gear review heaven this week. And after a little bit of a wait, and that could be understatement of the day, um, I'm very pleased to have one of these in the studio. This is the amazing Audio Fuse by our friends at Arturia. I first saw, I think, version one of Audio Fuse back at the NAM Show 2016. Um, so we've waited a little while for this one, but trust me, it's been worth it. Why the wait? So first of all, in development cycles, you're working with the materials you have, uh, particular A to D converters, mic pre's, circuit design, things like that. And then what happens is someone comes along and says, well, we've just got this new thing that's better than that thing that we really want you to use. And that's what's happened here. Mic pre circuit design has changed, A to D circuit design has changed, the specs of components have changed over time. So what they were using two and a half years ago in the design and manufacture of this thing, they actually went, whoa, hang on, things are better now, let's scrap that, which is an incredibly brave thing to do. We'll scrap that and we'll take on the new technology. And trust me, it's been worth it. This thing is killer. It's a very compact form factor. It's ticking a great many boxes. Um, so let's get up close and personal with the audio fuse. So around the front is where things start to get interesting. We have our two main inputs for channels one and two on XLR jack combination jacks. We then have two separate headphone outputs on either quarter inch or mini jack. Very, very nice, because how often have you scrabbled around for one of those little connectory adaptory things? On top, we have our two main channels, and we have 48 volt phantom power, phase invert, pad, and instrument or line select for each, along with the main gain pot. Uh, along the front, we have the main headphone controls. So we have a headphone volume for each of the two outputs, mono, and a selector between the main outputs or Q outputs one and two. That's to do with the software, the AudioFuse software that is incredibly powerful and really does take this thing to the next level. Up here in the top right hand corner, we're going a little bit old school with a kind of blend pot between the direct and the computer signal for zero latency monitoring. Trust me, if you're running a, uh, a machine that's anything like the last three, four years old, this thing's gonna be absolutely fine. You won't need to worry about that too much, but they definitely have built in a certain amount of backwards compatibility, which is really nice. On the front, we also have talkback, which we can route to many and various outputs in the chain. However, one of my favorite features on this thing is so simple, it's stupid. Up here, the Arturia button closes and launches the audio fuse control panel. It's really subtle, it's really nice. This also acts to launch the software in the first place, so you don't actually have to have it running, but as soon as I hit it, I can bury it from being in front of my pretzel session or bring it back, which is really nice. So around the back, this thing really is a powerhouse of connectivity. We have our ADA optical IO, meaning we can get eight channels of ADA optical in and out of the device. We then have phonos for SPDIF, which also double as word clock IO. We then have these two mini jacks, which are actually for these babies to hook up to, which give us MIDI IO without the use of a huge great MIDI DIN port taking up half the back real estate, which is nice. Moving down, we have two more inputs over jack. These are line inputs, not instrument or mic pre's, obviously. Speaker outputs, set A and set B. We then have inserts for the first two channels on the front. We then have phono inputs uh, for anyone wishing to connect turntables up to this thing. And of course then for that purpose, we have an earth strap loop power supply, which you don't need, of course, because this thing will also power from bus power from USB, the USB connector, and it's also a three-way USB hub. This thing has got it going on. And if you're worried about security or anything like that, there's also a Kensington lock port. So the other half of the powerhouse that is the Audio Fuse is the Audio Fuse Control Center software. It's a fairly simple place to be but there's a lot of power going on here. We've got a direct recreation of the top of the unit. So we've got our line, mic, and instrument inputs, 48 volt phantom power, phase invert, pad. And if we had a jack plugged in rather than XLR, we'd have the instrument option. 
and that's repeated for both channels one and two. Our main volume, very nice, and the LEDs that go with that, of course. We also have then routing options for our headphones one and two, and routing and control options for main speakers, switching between speakers A and B. We then have control for the line three and four or phono inputs, so they're around the back, uh, instrument or pad, stereo, and if we go into phono mode and link these together, that's pretty much how we'd be running it if we were using a set of decks. We then come down here to our main monitoring section, and we've got options here for where we monitor, so main, Q1 or Q2, talkback, and how we route the talkback. We've then got input controls and monitor controls for our four analog inputs and our eight ADA opticals. And over here on the top left-hand side, we have our settings area for things like clock source, sample rate, digital IO, and where things are routed. Now, where things get interesting is over here is in the speaker B section. And if we click on this, we can go into our reamping options, which is very, very handy indeed. This makes the speaker B outputs into our reamp outputs and adjusts the impedance accordingly. Now, up here in the very top left in the audio fuse menu, we get into the real deep down nitty gritty of this baby. If we go into preferences, we can change the skin color, gray and light. I quite like the dark. We've then got options for how we link our trim levels for our speakers. So we, the two levels can be absolutely matched up perfectly. Our dim level, the impedance of our digital input, the device name. But up here, this is a particularly powerful area, the power mode. Now in auto mode, it's gonna work to maximum operation being either bus powered from your Mac or PC or being plugged into the power supply. In green mode, you're gonna be using slightly less power, uh, especially handy when you're using this with a MacBook Pro with a, a not very wonderful battery life. Um, but you're still gonna keep access to things like phantom power and good quality mic pre's. Now in mix down mode and mix down green mode, we lose a lot of the kind of the input functionality that you don't need when you're mixing but you keep that lovely D2A quality for either output into speakers or to headphones. Very handy if you're mixing on the train, for example. A quiet train, perhaps. So we can talk about specs and data sheets and numbers and all that stuff until the metaphorical cows come home. Trust me, this thing stacks up against the competition incredibly well, especially when you take into account its 599 euro price point. But you're not worried about specs, you're not worried about numbers, what you're worried about is how it sounds. So, we've built a track. Of course we've built a track, there's always a track, it's the law. Uh, first up, we put some drums down, using the two mic pre's on the front of the audio fuse for our overheads, then we had a Focusrite octa pre for the rest of the drums, running into the eight optical port. Drums sounded great, there's not much in the way of processing on the drums, a bit of reverb, that's about it. So we then decided, hey, we're working with Arturia. Why don't we hook up a micro brute mini bass style keyboardy synthy thing and run that into one of the line inputs and use that as a bass instrument, a bass line. So we've done that. We've then gone for electric guitars coming from the 11 rack and they're running into the line inputs as well. Uh, we've then added some acoustic guitar using the amazing uh, Audio Technica 4081 microphone that's running into the mic pre's. We then start to get a bit silly. It is Friday afternoon after all. Um, so working with the guys at Artoria, they sent us over some of their soft synths, and we decided to put some Dupe 8. We all know what that's supposed to be on as a kind of mono, kind of interesting, kind of movement track, um, and it turned into the kind of electro metal romp thing that you're about to hear. Now, one of the audio fuse um, little buried secrets, I suppose, is the fact that it also can act as a reamp box. Now, whenever I'm recording, I like to record a clean DI of, the, of any electric guitar, and we did that, and one of the sounds from the 11 rack really wasn't cutting it, it was too much, or it just didn't feel quite right. So, we can use the audio fuse by choosing where we want to route certain signals 
and within Pro Tools doing the same, and reamp out through the 11 rack again and choose a different sound, which is exactly what we did. In actual fact, in this case, we doubled it up. So we've got a complete duplicate across a hard stereo pan of a cleaner, they're both dirty sounds, but a cleaner sound versus filthy sound. Um, and that worked incredibly well. This thing is utterly amazing. If deep black is not your color bag, there's also spacey gray and classic silver, which also looks really pretty. But my single favorite feature about this thing is the lid. It sounds ridiculous, but for when you're traveling, pop, away you go. Utterly brilliant. It's not gonna get the top smashed up. Yes, if you're putting it in a bag with cases and cables and stuff, everything gets mashed, but it's nice to know that the unit's gonna be nice and safe. And for that reason, this thing is getting my editor's choice. It's taken a long time to get there, but trust me, what they've produced is genius. It ticks so many boxes for so many types of audio professional, be it a DJ, um, kind of more conventional musician, uh, anyone working with loops and that sort of stuff, it's awesome. I highly recommend you check out the Arturia Audio Fuse. So we'll play the whole track back. It's messy, it's dirty, and quite frankly, it should be turned up to 11. Oh, that's down there. Uh, but for now, my name's James Ivey, and I will see you again soon for some more Gear Talk.